大家好 I'm Nathan Rich, aka 火锅大王 I'm tired of waiting to talk about this. Tired to death. I have no one left to talk about this movie with, so I've just got to tell you. Sorry. You know, ever since I was a child, I've been a lover of movies. My mother and I used to watch them together, and I'd watch them without her when I was home from school. She had hundreds of movies recorded onto VHS tapes from TV. Horror movies and sci-fi were my favorites, but I watched pretty much all of them. I actually wish I hadn't watched so many, to be honest with you, because time spent watching movies is time spent doing nothing else, really. Anyway. There are a lot of movies I love. For example, Hellraiser, A Clockwork Orange, Evil Dead 2. Hell, I have many favorites. The X Men, however, is not one of them. Though I actually did read X Men comics as a kid, I rarely enjoy movies based on comic books. But it was in X Men that I was introduced to Hugh Jackman. At the time, he seemed like a corny hero actor to me, just another guy in the pack. That is, until in 2006, I watched a movie that looked relatively boring. The cover made it look like some weird fantasy movie, and I didn't really know that much about it. That movie was called The Fountain. At the time, I was slowly coming off of the streets. I watched the movie at a friend's apartment because I was living in a sewer. Seriously, I hadn't cried at that time in many, many years. I didn't think I would ever be able to cry again. That was until I saw another movie, It's a Wonderful Life, for the first time. The sense of family, the sense of belonging. When you're out there all alone, those things are just a distant dream. I cried a lot, but the fountain was a bit different for me. There wasn't anything about kids or families with children. It was a different kind of movie altogether, and yet I cried again for this movie. I was sucked in pretty deep. The acting, especially by Hugh Jackman, was amazing, like world class. The first time I watched the movie, I didn't even really understand it, but the mood of the film was amazing. The visual effects beautiful. I just loved it. It was a very emotional, deep, romantic movie. Honestly, and this is a real confession here, this movie to this day is my favorite movie of all time. Me. I watched it several times and eventually figured out the movie completely. But oddly, I understood it incorrectly. That is to say, the way I understood the plot later turned out to be different than the official explanation of the plot. Okay, well I was wrong about what's happening in the movie. So what? Well, the weird thing is, I was very sure about my understanding of the movie, even after I heard the official story. In fact, I still think my version of the movie is still much better. For those of you who haven't seen it, let me tell you basically what kind of movie it is. You can definitely watch it with your loved ones, but there might be parts a little too sad for some young kids, maybe. But it's not overall a sad movie; it's a beautiful movie. I guess you would say technically it's a love movie, but it kind of feels more like a fantasy sci-fi movie. The movie studio claims it's about three unrelated stories which link to each other only through the transcendence of love. Basically, now that's a pretty good story. I'll give you that. But the real way to watch this movie is to just ignore that entire thing and pretend the story is how I understood it to be. Because I don't want to spoil the movie, I won't tell you how I viewed it until the very end of this video. So if you want to watch it first, I highly recommend that you do so. And another amazing thing about this movie is the soundtrack. Also, I don't recommend that you listen to any critics about this movie. A lot of them thought it sucked, and maybe they're right. The IMDb rating isn't very good, but to me, it's top notch. It's just such a touching and unbelievably powerful story. So go out and watch it, and when you're done, watch the very end of this video, and you tell me if what I think happened is way better than the supposed real story. I thought I would do a lighter video today because the next one coming is well dark. And since they're demonetizing all my controversial videos, I need to do some lighter ones in between to balance things out. So go watch it, The Fountain. Go. Thanks, everybody. See you. Okay, I can't hold it in anymore. Guys, hopefully you've seen this movie already, and you're watching this now. So here's how I understood this wonderful movie. His wife and him are living in the present time. He's a scientist, doctor, and she's dying. She knows she's dying, and she writes a story to pass the time. The story is about her as a queen and him as a valiant conquistador trying to save her. In other words, she's artistically representing the real events. That means the Spanish story is not real; it's just the story she's writing. 
Now, after she dies, he experiences the most negative and dark emotions in existence, especially guilt, grief, and failure. The space story is, in my explanation, a visualization of his emotional state. He clutches for his ring and is reminded of her. He hates himself and her for the misery he's in, and eventually he finds peace when he forgives himself and her. That's what reaching the heaven is. He's finding peace. Finishing writing her story was part of the closure process. Maybe this is why I can relate to the story so much. In some ways, it's similar to what happened in my mind when it comes to my mother. Well, I hope you can agree with me that this movie was amazing. And it's even more amazing when you view it in that way, isn't it? Thanks again, everybody. See you. All flesh decays. Death turns all to ash. And thus, death frees every soul.